Thank you for joining me, everybody. We are again talking about that major winter storm that's going to be bringing some blizzard conditions to a large portion of the Midwest. I especially have my eyes on the central and lower Great Lakes, so let's talk about that. First off, we are taking a look at our National Weather Service current hazards page here. All of these blue shades here across the southern and uh, western Great Lakes into the central plains here, these are all winter storm watches. Several of these are going to become winter storm warnings and blizzard warnings, with some advisories also issued across parts of Nebraska, Kansas, and Colorado. Now, there's also a lot of wind chill watches and wind chill warnings sprinkled in there. We're going to talk about that later towards the end of the video because that could be a big problem as well. But as far as the storm goes, here's the European model that was rendered this morning, and we are speeding this up to this evening here. We're going to have a low situated right over western Montana here, so it hasn't even moved out of the Rockies yet. There is still some stuff that can still change across parts of the Midwest, but we're just talking about the general possibility of getting conditions across these areas, and we are getting it to the point where we can start starting to narrow uh, down accumulations, uh, but we're still not there quite yet. Either way, though, as we head into tomorrow morning, the low is going to traverse across the central Rockies and then eventually make its way out of the Rockies as we get into Wednesday night uh, into Thursday morning here. At that same time, this is tomorrow night, we're going to have these tightening isobars here across the central plains into the northern Mississippi River Valley. Those isobars are these black lines here. The tighter that these get together indicate a strengthening storm system and also strengthening winds as well. So this light to moderate snow that we do have falling tomorrow night across parts of Nebraska and Kansas will be blowing around and there could be some localized whiteout conditions, but they will get worse as this thing traverses into the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley by Thursday night into Friday. So let's zoom into the Midwest here to see what's going on by Thursday evening. The low is likely going to be right around Indianapolis, but again, the exact track of the low is still uncertain and that will have a huge impact on the overall snow totals for your area. But the expected scenario here is we're probably going to see rain starting the event across southeast Michigan, western Ohio, eastern Indiana, areas like that. It's going to start as rain. So if it does start as rain, don't think that you're not getting snow. You will probably see snow, uh, probably, uh, but this will likely start as rain. And then as we get later into the night on Thursday into Friday morning, let me back that up a little bit. The low is going to intensify as it moves into northwestern Ohio here towards the Cleveland area, and then it wraps up across southeast Michigan as we get into the uh, morning hours on Friday. As that happens, the storm is going to be rapidly intensifying, possibly below 980 millibars. Remember, the, the more that the pressure drops, the stronger the storm is becoming. And there are some significant differences from today's model than there were yesterday. So yesterday, we were expecting the brunt of the snowfall to be over western lower Michigan into eastern Wisconsin, uh, northeastern Illinois as well, because the low was expected to wrap up right over western Michigan, but we'll take this back a little bit. Notice how the low here on this model is situated over southeast Michigan by Friday morning. That means that instead of it wrapping up over here like this and creating a bunch of widespread heavy snowfall to the western Great Lakes, a scenario like this would bring the higher totals further eastward to areas like central and possibly southeastern Michigan as well. My eyes are going to be all across lower Michigan and eastern upper Michigan on Friday as the low continues to wrap around. Again, the exact placement will have a significant impact on how high your snow totals are. Also notice how tight these isobars are. The winds are going to be very strong across the Great Lakes here. We're looking at 50 to 60 mile an hour winds being widespread across a large swath of the Great Lakes. What this is going to do is it's going to be whipping around all the snowfall here, causing pretty much blizzard conditions across the area. Friday looks like a treacherous travel day. If you do live across Michigan or anywhere across the lower Great Lakes, you're going to want to uh, keep an eye on the weather for sure if you do live in those regions. And as we get further into Friday night and eventually Saturday morning, most of the snow is going to be done with the exception of some squalls and some lake effect snow showers, but the winds will stick around during the day on Saturday, which is Christmas Eve, and uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that as well as all this fresh snow is going to be blowing around. Now let's take a look at our potential snow totals here. I really put an emphasis on the word potential because we don't know 100% what's going to happen just yet. But I think, and this does too, that the brunt of the heavy snow accumulations is going to be from northern Indiana into lower Michigan. And I think if you live in the western Great Lakes, we're talking about Wisconsin, the western UP of Michigan, eastern uh, Minnesota here near the Minneapolis area, 
the forecast is especially tricky for you guys right now because depend you know how much snow that you guys get is heavily influenced by exactly where the low tracks so if you live in green bay if you live in milwaukee if you live heck even in minneapolis it's really going to depend on where the low tracks so right now it's showing a good swath of six to ten inches but don't get that set in stone just yet if you live across lower Michigan into eastern upper Michigan, that's where I currently think the heaviest snow is going to be. And the National Weather Service blend here is also saying that western Michigan here could possibly be looking at over a foot. Same goes for the UP of Michigan. Areas like Lansing could be getting some heavy totals. Far southeast Michigan, closer to to uh, Detroit, probably going to be looking at a good three to six inches here. But again, these totals will vary depending on the exact track of the low and where it decides to rapidly intensify. Let's take a look at the northeast into the mid-Atlantic here, because again, this is even more so going to start as rain. And this will not be a major snowstorm from uh, eastern Ohio down into West Virginia and western Pennsylvania. It's going to start as rain, but then it should transition over to light snow for a brief period on Friday morning as the cold air sets in and as the winds increase. So this will be the kind of snow that does cause some localized whiteout conditions in those heavier bands, but it will be short-lived and shouldn't result in much accumulation. Uh, these blue shades, you're only looking at about one to three inches of snow in total. Uh, the pinks is where you're getting over six inches, so not too much. But the Appalachian Mountains, you know, higher elevation vicinities are going to be looking at higher totals, of course. And again, with those winds, it is going to cause some localized problems here and there. But I expect the brunt of the blizzard conditions to be across the central and lower Great Lakes, uh, particularly lower Michigan. Now, another big problem here that we have to keep in mind. Again, I mentioned all the, the uh, wind chill watches and wind chill warnings that are in effect across the United States. This is going to be the coldest Christmas in decades for many areas across the lower 48. We have a brutal Arctic air mass that's going to be making its way into the area. It's already starting to make its way into the region, but by tomorrow morning, we're going to have wind chills 30 degrees below zero across the upper Midwest. And notice what that looks like by Thursday morning and then Friday morning. Take a look at this. We have zero degree wind chills making it down all the way into the Dallas area, all the way down into the Jackson, Mississippi area, into Birmingham, Alabama. It's going to feel like negative 15 in Nashville, negative 23 in Indianapolis, getting even colder as you get further westward into the central and northern Mississippi River Valley and the central and northern plains here, possibly uh, below 50 degrees below zero across parts of the Dakotas into Montana. It's going to be bitterly cold Friday morning. Even Christmas Eve morning here on Saturday, uh, the eastern United States get on the action with wind chills below zero. And even by Christmas morning, it doesn't recede too much. A good portion of the country, particularly the northern Mississippi River Valley into the Great Lakes and northeast, will still have wind chills well below zero on Christmas Day here. So this is a major Arctic air outbreak uh, across the United States. And again, even the deep south will, will be looking at wind chills below zero. It is possible, again, with the dynamics of the storm, that you could even be looking at some back-end snow showers across parts of Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina. Areas like that could also be getting a little tiny bit of snowfall given the Arctic air that's going to be pushing the rain out of the region. So that's another thing that we have to consider. We got the wind chills, we got the snow, and we got the wind. When you get all those things coming together, you can get some dangerous conditions. And again, I think that the primary area of concern is likely going to be Missouri, particularly the central Mississippi River Valley, into the lower Great Lakes. So guys, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. If you did enjoy it and want to see more of them, be sure to subscribe to the channel with those post notifications turned on. And also be sure to drop a like on the video if you guys want other people to get this information as well. But until the next video or live stream, stay safe and I will talk to you guys back here next time.